What it do, cuckolds? It's your boy, the hater. And just as I thought that I was done with work, a few more things happened upon my plate. So now I gotta wait another couple of hours to finish, unfortunately, up in this mug, and I'm not happy about it. Nevertheless, the hater took a break and decided to go outside for Hater Outdoors to talk about the declining state of wrestling once again, which has become a major theme of this channel. Now, last night we had NXT nobody probably watched. Let's be real. They started with getting less than 900,000 views, which was presented as some sort of massive victory, right? Imagine that, you know what I mean? They're like, oh, NXT drew almost 900,000 viewers. That's nothing. That's like, you might as well not even have the show at this point. And you're going to see that this week, I think tomorrow the ratings are going to come out. You're going to see this week that basically it probably went down to about six, 700,000, if I had to guess. And if it hasn't yet, which is possible, right? Because it's still early and it's still new on the CW, um, it's gonna go down to probably around 500, 600,000 in a few months. You can, you can bet your ass on that one, right? Now, the NXT episode, I didn't really watch it, but I did watch the highlights. And one match was Obafemi versus Tony D'Angelo. And Tony D'Angelo beat Obafemi for one of the most meaningless titles in the history of titles, the North American Championship. Now, I personally believe that this was a good choice for Obafemi because having this title is basically like being a mid-carder on the developmental show. And maybe now, Tony D'Angelo can move on and face Trick Williams, which could be interesting because they're two big guys, you know? Finally, some big guys wrestling each other, right? The match isn't going to be great, but who cares, right? It's never been about the match. Anyways, right? I don't even know what's going to happen. Who knows, right? But Tony D'Angelo pinned him with a roll-up, which was really stupid. Um, and they presented this win as if Tony D'Angelo achieved something important. You know what I mean? Like, who cares? Like, he just achieved the status of mid-card jobber, which is what he's been for years now, you know? Like, last uh, pay-per-view, last time he was in a title match, it was for the NXT title, which for better or for worse, is still presented as a world title. At the very least, the NXT world title is considered relevant because it has a bigger history, a longer history, I should say, and more prestige than other titles like Gunther's boring-ass world heavyweight title. You know what I mean? As a, as a matter of fact, I would make it a triple threat and throw uh, Trick Williams in there against Kucky and Gunther uh, because that's how it used to be, right? Where it's like the NXT champion is considered like a big deal. You know, now it's... It's basically a developmental brand once again, so nobody cares. The procedure's fallen to zero. Now, this video was slightly going to be about NXT, but that's all I got to say about NXT. The rest of the video is going to be spent talking about uh, the importance of The Rock, right? It's not a video about The Rock per se. The Rock is just a figurehead in this video and in this explanation. But the reality is, I think we can all see now that when The Rock came out, you all felt a star. A star was there, right? Now, whether or not we have more stars around the corner remains to be seen. You know what I mean? Um, but that doesn't really change the reality that even if we do have stars or we don't have stars in the future, in the present, I think everyone can agree that there are no stars, right? There's not even one star. The closest person to it is Roman Reigns, but it's hard to consider him a star because he's never around. So it's like, what the hell, right? Like, do you, like, does anyone think that there's any chance that Roman Reigns is going to be in the next three SmackDowns? The answer to that is zero. Now, he might be in the next SmackDown because we have to explain the fact that The Rock came back, but would you be surprised if at SmackDown, neither Roman Reigns nor The Rock appear and the story just shifts to Cucky Owens versus Cucky Rhodes? Like, that's probably what's going to happen. I would not be shocked at all if SmackDown doesn't have Roman, doesn't have The Rock. Quite frankly, they're too big of a deal to show up. So is Cucky. So is Gunther on Raw. Nobody shows up anymore, right? Now, I know I've been saying this for a few weeks now, but this must be reset in the new context of The Rock appearing, right? The fact is this. Nobody cares about anything that happened with these jobbers that we're not going to see for months. CM Punk came out and said, I'm not coming back for a while. Drew McIntyre isn't going to be back for like a month probably. And when he does come back, he's not going to wrestle because nobody wrestles on Raw anymore. So what's the point, right? 
Well, the point is that there is one star in wrestling, and that star is The Rock. Now, The Rock is a part-timer, but his star power is so high that even as a part-timer, he makes WWE feel like a big deal again. You know what I mean? I saw a thing where The Rock was talking about how he negotiated a salary back in the day directly with Vince McMahon, and he asked for $2 million, and he should have asked for $15, 20000000 million. It would have been worth every penny because they've made hundreds of millions all off of The Rock's name and likeness and everything else, right? Because there's millions of people that watch wrestling, that bought the WWE video games, that bought the t-shirts, that did all of these things only because of The Rock. And the same cannot be said about anybody else. Now, there's always going to be a baseline in merch sales, right? Like if you go with your son, let's say, to an episode of Raw, and your son's like, Daddy, Daddy, I want a t-shirt. You're going to say, all right, son, I'll get you an overpriced like $70 t-shirt or whatever, right? Because you're my son. And then the son's going to look at the t-shirts and he's going to say, Daddy, Daddy, I don't know which one I want. And then you and your son have to suffer the indignity of picking the best uh, t-shirt amongst the jobber t-shirts that they're presenting to you. Maybe it'll be one with Seamus wearing a hat and holding a shillelagh. And that's the one you have to settle for because there isn't anything good happening right now. So people are always going to buy WWE products, right? Just because the brand of WWE is so powerful, right? There's people like me that are always going to buy the video games because I enjoy the video game, but I'm not buying it. Oh, I finally get to play as Roman Reigns. You know, the last time I bought a video game, a WWE video game, where I was excited about I get to play as new wrestlers was the one when The Shield debuted. I was like, oh, cool, I get to play as The Shield. There's three of them. They're new. They're going to be main eventers. This is a big deal, right? But beyond that, like, I don't, give a, I don't give a rat's ass. You think I'm going to buy the next uh, WWE game so I can play as Oba Femi? I don't give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I'll pick him once in a while or, like, uh, play as Gunther. I don't give a damn. And that's the problem here. The problem is there's nobody to give a damn about. Now, I know people don't like hearing this, right? And the fact of the matter is that I, I understand why. I get it. You know what I mean? You want to be part of something, but you're not, right? You want to be part of a wrestling renaissance, of a new era, but you're not. And that's the problem. You are not part of anything because nothing's happening, right? They tell you it's going to be a big announcement. And at the end of the day, what happens is they tell you that there's a new title that's going to be on the line for one day, right, at a Saudi Arabia event. We have this basically at every Saudi Arabia event. There's some sort of new title or tournament or something that, that doesn't matter. Oh, the Altawaki Trophy, the prestigious Altawaki Trophy. Which brings me to Michael Cole, right? One of the things that I don't like at all about this new Triple H era is this ridiculous narrative that Michael Cole is now having fun and doing some of his best work. No, he isn't. No, what are you talking about? Michael Cole is being exposed. At the very least, Vince McMahon knew the name of some of the moves, so he would tell Michael Cole, hey, say Inziguri to the back of the head, right? Now Michael Cole doesn't even understand what's going on. Like, I'll give you an example. Carmelo Hayes has a move where he lifts the person into like a suplex and then turns around and does a cutter, right? He does this move, and Michael Cole and Cucky Graves acknowledge this move, as a move that Carmelo has done before, right? They're like, oh, this is a move that Carmelo does, right? Then Carmelo does the same move, but avalanche style from the top turnbuckle, and Corey Graves gets it, but Michael Cole doesn't understand seemingly. This is the same move that we just saw a few seconds ago, right? Michael Cole is so confused by the move that he's like, whoa, what a move, almost like a, almost like a neck breaker. It's like, and then Corey Graves is like, almost like a cutter, Cole. Why don't you just say what happened? He just did the same move from the top turnbuckle, and it's more badass. Simple as that. That's what happened. That's what you should say. So this notion that things are getting better is undermined by evidence on all calibers, right? The idea that the CW is getting better because, I'm sorry, that NXT is getting better, I should say, because it moved to the CW is absurd. It's not getting better, and it got moved to, to the CW, a.k.a. demoted, because it sucked, right? When, when Vince McMahon was around, SmackDown was on, on, on Fox, and CW was on USA. Now, SmackDown is on, like, USA Network. Raw is two hours again, at least for the short term, right? And NXT has now been demoted to the CW. The next step after that is Access TV, right? And after that, it's Twitch. You know what I'm saying? After that, it's going back to nowhere. And that's what's going to happen. Mark, mark my words. 
once the WWE deal with Raw and Netflix goes well, and Netflix will throw them 10 grand an episode to put on uh, NXT there as well, right? Like, that's what's going to happen. It's going to end up in, in, uh, on Netflix, and they're going to make it seem as if it's this huge move, right? Then when the Netflix deal fails, Raw is going to go back home, as it always does when it starts sucking, to USA Network, right? Like, when Raw started getting good, they had a massive deal with TN TNN back in the day. And then it was time to go back home when Raw started losing millions of viewers. Right? People were like, oh, USA is going to be a, a nice boost. Same thing. SmackDown was getting good because of Roman Reigns. Right? And it was overperforming Raw for the first time ever, basically. So they were like, oh, let's put it on, on SmackDown. I mean, on Fox. Right? And then Fox is like, and you could go look up like the comments by Lachlan Murdoch, where basically they, they, he basically says straight up, WWE SmackDown is not good enough to be on Fox. WWE SmackDown is not of that caliber. So we've already established this. NXT sucks. SmackDown sucks. Raw sucks. The PLEs suck ass. Right? The wrestlers suck. Michael Cole sucks more. Triple H just wants to infuse himself into everything. Right? It's like we've seen more of Triple H like in the last few months than we've seen of Vince McMahon maybe ever, except for when Vince McMahon was, a, was, a, was an authority figure, like an actual character. Triple H isn't even a character. If anything else, he's, a, he's completely embraced his new persona as a suit. He's not even Triple H anymore. Now he's Paul Levesque, right? Like, how do they even do that to us? But anyways, that's neither here nor there, but that's the reality that we find ourselves in. Wrestling is like, you know, it's just stuck in the middle of a lake. Right? It needs to go somewhere, but it ain't going nowhere. Cuckles!